The topic of today's video is Newton's Cradle. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about here today. So, this can be a school project, or it can be a fun science experiment, or it can even be entertaining to watch and calming and satisfying to see them moving. This can be made out of sticks or cardboard, but we're going to be showing you how we made it. So let us show you how this Newton's Cradle works. I am going to push these marbles slightly. Wow, do you see that? The marbles are only going in one direction and they're not scattering all over the place. They're going in one batch. Another interesting fact is that they look like a pendulum on a clock. They're going smoothly up and down. So what would happen if we lifted one marble and let it go? I am now going to lift one marble. Oh, this is so cool. When I lifted that one marble, it hit all the other marbles, but then this one marble was thrown off. Only one marble was thrown, not two, not even three, one marble. Now I'm going to show you this in slow motion. Whoa, did you see that? Only the very last marble is being thrown off. Now, what happens if we do two marbles? So now, I'm going to lift two marbles. Oh wow, this is so cool! Now, this time, when I lifted these two marbles, they hit all the rest of the marbles. And this time, not one marble was thrown off, two were, and three weren't either. Two were thrown off. I'm going to show you this in slow-mo. Wow, if you see now, only two, the last two marbles were thrown off. So let me tell you why this happens. So first, the Newton's Cradle was invented in 1967 by scientist Simon Preble and was named after the well-known, amazing physicist Isaac Newton. So this Newton's Cradle works with two basic laws. The law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of momentum states that when two objects collide, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So for example, when we drop one ball, that ball has momentum. And when it hits this ball, this ball gets momentum, which is passed on to the third one, which is passed on to the fourth one. And when it gets to the fifth one, the fifth marble has nothing to hit. Therefore, it gets thrown out. And because of the force of gravity, it gets pulled back in and same thing back and forth. Now, ideally, if there was no friction, no air resistance, the momentum would keep on going forever. But obviously, that's not possible because friction is always present. In the second law, the law of conservation of energy, it states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transmitted and converted. So what happens is there are two main types of energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored energy waiting to be used. So when we lift the ball up, that ball has gravitational energy stored waiting to be used. And now that potential energy, when we let that ball go, turns into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy that's actually being used. So as the ball is moving, the momentum, the force of gravity is being used. So potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy. And as it hits these balls, the energy gets transferred into each one. And soon the last ball gets the energy which gets thrown up. And because of gravity, again, it has potential energy and kinetic and back and forth, the energy gets transmitted and converted. Now, this Newton's cradle has friction and air resistance present in it. And both of these laws are ideally supposed to be worked in a complete vacuum with no resistance at all. 
therefore, and no friction at all either. Therefore, these laws only work 100% when there's no friction. So if there was no friction, no air resistance, that means this Newton cradle could go on forever. These two laws are also very, very important because they're used in many ways today in real life. The law of conservation of momentum is used everywhere in rockets. When the rocket is launching, the momentum of the fire is used to launch the rocket upwards. It's used in when we, when we drive a car, the wheels push the road backwards as the car goes forwards. It's used everywhere. The law of conservation of energy is also used everywhere. When we go bowling, when we bowl, the bowling ball has energy which gets transferred onto the bowling pills, pins and they fall down. So these two laws are very important and are used everywhere. So that is how this Newton's cradle works. And there are so many other reasons why this Newton cradle works. For example, the balls in the Newton's cradle have to be to work ideally. They ideally have to be the same size, mass, weight, density, because especially density. Why? Because vibrations of energy and momentum travel differently through objects of different density. So this is the science behind the Newton's cradle and it is very, very interesting. It is an amazing experiment, amazing science project because it has so much to learn from, from it. So thank you Simon Preble for inventing such an amazing, amazing device. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Now if you're interested in knowing more of our future videos and you really like to learn about this cool, interesting stuff, then click that red subscribe button. And if you click the bell beside it, you will actually be notified of when our next videos come out. So click that bell button and select all notifications. And but before you go, we're going to show you a slow motion of how this Newton's cradle works. Bye.